Hey, Michael. Um, so my name is Josh Luthi. Um, I'm going to give the Intro to Flojo webinar today. I'm an application specialist um, here at BD Life Sciences Informatics. So um, we'll go ahead and get started. We have um, there's a lot to show in these intro webinars. But yeah, feel free if you guys want to um, ask any questions along the way, just enter it there in the chat and I'll try to answer it as we go along. So um, just a quick outline of what we'll um, look at today. Um, we'll start with um, navigating the V10 workspace, just so you're um, familiar with, with uh, Flojo if you're new to it. We'll take a look at creating and editing groups. We'll take a look at um, creating keywords in the workspace. We'll get into the graph window, drawing gates, looking at ancestry. Then um, from there, we'll look at um, the layout editor where we'll create images and export um, graphical reports from there. Take a look at the table editor and then um, saving workspace templates. Um, it's a good way to um, make your future analyses go much quicker using templates. And then finally, we'll look at um, getting into customizing Flojo a little bit by changing preferences. So here's the layout of uh, a Flojo workspace. And this is where we're going to basically just organize our data so that we can uh, perform different actions on our data. Um, up at the top of the workspace is um, the toolbar where we have a lot of um, the ribbons and different bands and buttons. In the center section is the group pane where we do organize our data by groups, right? Um, group apply certain analyses to those samples in the group. And then down below is the, the sample pane where we see our individual FCS files. Um, at the top of the workspace, again, is the, the action toolbar. And this is where we're gonna do most of our um, navigation through the workspace. And um, we have tabs across the top. And so going through the different tabs, you'll see different um, ribbons appear here. And within the ribbons are different bands. So like there's a groups band, population, statistics, and the different bands group together similar um, actions or buttons. Um, here, this is the application button. So here's a, a good shortcut to like open up previously um, saved analyses or um, saving your workspace, quitting Flojo. You can get all to that through this application button. Over here on the right, top right corner is um, the heart icon that will get to preferences. We'll, we'll take a look at that a little bit later on in the live demo, but that's where you can customize parts of Flojo. And then also I wanna point out this little ribbon button here too, gets into um, ribbon configuration. So if you want to customize like the layout here and the ribbons, um, you can do that through this customized ribbon button right here. So one of the first things we're gonna do with an analysis is obviously load in some data. And there's um, different ways to do that. There's, um, you can click these add samples button and from there, just navigate to where you might have your data stored. Or my kind of go-to method is if I already have my data organized in a folder, just drag and drop from, you know, your file browser into the workspace and that'll load in all the data into your workspace. And here we can see all the samples that we loaded and then some groups up above. Okay, taking a closer look here at the group pane. Again, this is um, where we organize the samples. You can think of it kind of like as a folder structure where um, one of the default groups is 
you always have in any new workspace that you create is the all samples group. And we'll see um, here, there's some different columns like size and role. And size just tells us how many files are in that particular all samples group. And then over on the right, we have a role. So like what kind of role is assigned to these different groups? Um, we might group different files together so that we can perform different um, batch type actions on them, such as um, like batch reporting, exporting images, right? Or um, statistics on those samples within the group. So creating a, a new group in the workspace is real easy. You just click the create group button. Um, you'll give it a name up here at the top. Um, you can choose the, the text style, give it a role. This isn't required, but basically you would need um, to give it a name um, and then just click the create group button and that'll make a new group in the workspace. And then if you wanna add samples to it, um, you can just from down below, select your samples and drag them up into the group. Um, if you need to go back and modify any of those settings for the group you just created, you can always just double click on that existing group and it gets you back to essentially this window, but um, let me show you, it's called modified group at that point. So for example, if I wanted to um, modify my group such that um, samples get automatically loaded into that particular group, we can set up something that's called inclusion criteria. Um, <clears throat> so as long as you have this option here, live group selected, um, Flojo can use criteria or rules that we create to automatically um, pull files into that group that you make without you having to um, click and drag to load them in. So for example, um, here we've created this group called STEM equals PI plus NS. And then um, these files, there's a keyword that was created at the cytometer um, and when it was exported called STEM. So this inclusion criteria is looking for this keyword STEM. And if it equals this string here, PI plus NS, it's gonna automatically load it into this group. Okay, so that's a quick way you can um, create some criteria for sorting data in the workspace. <clears throat> and down below, right, the samples pane of our Flojo workspace, that's where we're gonna see all the samples um, that are in that particular group that you've selected. Um, there's some default columns here as well. We'll see like a name, statistic, and number of cells. These are some default columns. You can add um, or display additional information in the workspace. Um, so like, again, these were a few keywords that um, already exist in those data files. And so we're just displaying that information for each of the samples here in the workspace in the sample pane. We can also see below this sample, right, there's a, a set of gates that were drawn and applied to this particular sample. So again, some keywords. Um, it's basically um, like metadata that we might want to um, add either to the workspace or to our samples. Um, if they don't exist already, you can add that kind of information by coming to the workspace, keyword menu here and select add keyword. You'd give the keyword a name and then you would fill in values here for that particular keyword. Also below this keywords button is a way to like quickly um, distribute or generate keyword values. So you don't have to type in neg, you know, 40 times. There's, uh, you can fill a series of keywords with some options here. Um, and so if you 
already have some keywords that exist in your files and you just want to display them. We don't have to add the keyword. We can just right click on the header right here, choose edit columns. And then from there, we'll be able to search for these keywords and um, just choose those so that they're displayed here in the workspace. And we might want to use these keywords later to organize or sort our samples, um, create groups with them, or even generate different batch reports of images or statistics. Um, here's our graph window, right? This is where we're gonna interact a lot with um, our data files. <clears throat> Um, just so you're familiar with the layout of the graph window, up at the top of the graph window is where we have um, different gating tools. Okay, we have some undo and redo buttons, and then there's even a way to like navigate up and down your gating hierarchy or um, up or down the um, samples in your particular group. On either axis of the graph window, we see um, parameter selectors. So we can, from here, choose different parameters to display in our graph. There's a tertiary parameter. If we choose this option here, color axis, <clears throat> we can color map the um, MFI or expression of a third parameter on top of two that we're already displaying in the workspace, or sorry, in the graph window. Um, there's additional menus down here that can be expanded. Uh, here's options, right? If you want to choose a different type of plot to look at, you can do that here. Um, active gate options. So if we've drawn a gate and selected it, we can um, change some properties of that particular gate. If we want to look at events inside or outside that gate, we can change the tent, for example, or quickly make it larger or smaller with some of these buttons right here. So again, up at the top are different gating tools, right? So um, for example, we have like a rectangle gate here, um, quad gates, ellipse gates, um, polygons, auto contour gates. Um, so any of these gates that you draw, um, once you draw them, you'll get um, a frequency apparent statistic displayed as well right there in the graph window. Anytime you draw a gate, you can um, modify it, move it around, delete it. So if you draw it initially and it's not maybe in the, in the perfect spot, um, don't worry, you can select that gate, move it around, um, select just a specific vertice and stretch it, resize the gate as you need it. Um, so pretty simple to do. And we'll take a closer look again at that um, in the live demo. And once you've drawn a gate, now you'll double click on it and it'll open a new graph window and it'll show us just those events that were within the gate we just drew. And that's how we kind of construct this gating hierarchy that we see here. Um, as you begin to build this gating hierarchy, you'll see these arrows here. So any of these, um, you can expand or collapse them um, so it'll make navigating through your, your sample pane a little easier. Um, a lot of the functionality in Flojo is with drag and drop. So um, if we've drawn some gates here, you can select these and apply them to other samples by um, drag and drop. So here's a look at different plot types, um, how we can view the data in those different graph windows. You've probably seen these pseudocolor plots um, are very common. And what we see here is like a color gradient. So red being um, a very dense population of events here out to this blue where there's a less dense population of cells. And going over to the right, we see a contour. So similar kind of fashion here, we see these, these lines drawn on areas of uh, dense events. And then um, the dots are considered um, outliers. And there's some options in the, in the graph window to 
show or hide these events that are considered outliers. Um, density plot, very similar, right, to this contour, but instead of these lines, we're getting kind of this gradient of color, showing us dense regions to not as dense areas. And then a zebra plot is kind of a, a combination of those last two, where we have those lines again, um, drawn along the different density areas, but as well as like a color gradient within each of those different rings. And some of the basic um, dot plots here. And then here's an example of uh, the third color parameter. So here we're displaying this uh, PE parameter. So we're mapping this, the expression values um, as a heat map, a color gradient on top of the two existing parameters that we're showing on X and Y. And then over on the right, right, just your uh, basic univariate histogram. Um, if it's your first time loading in data from your cytometer into Flojo, um, you'll want to be familiar with how to visually um, adjust the transformation of the data in the graph window. And, and to do that, you just, from either axis here, you can get to this transform button, and then we'll choose customize axis. And then you'll see this um, transformation window appear. And here what we're seeing is all events, so ungated events, even if maybe you've initiated this transformation change from a gated population, what we're showing here in this transform window is basically all or ungated events right here. Um, and then on the right is a list of parameters. And here towards the bottom is where we can adjust some of those settings for whatever scale we're looking at. So let's take a closer look at, at some of those settings there. Um, so if you've opened a transform window, right, you're, it's going to initially have selected whichever parameter you've initiated it from, but you might or oftentimes, right, select multiple parameters here. So you could select, for example, like all of your compensated parameters, if you know you're going to essentially apply the same transformation or scaling to all of the parameters. And then with these buttons here, the plus minus, um, we can add or remove range here at the positive or the negative ends. There's a, a scale section, so we can choose from different transformation types, right? Like linear transformation, logarithmic, by exponential, arc sine. So depending on um, where your data is coming from, what kind of cytometer, you might choose a different scale here. And then depending on what scale you've selected, these transformation settings um, might be you know, turned off um, for what we're showing here by exponential where we have this, it's kind of a combination of linear. So the scale around zero is in a linear scale and everything after that's a logarithmic scale. So these sliders become important here and with this type of transformation where we can use this slider to add or remove extra negative decades. And then there's also positive decades. So with this slider, we can add or remove positive decades. And then here with basis, right, we can change the compression of this linear scale around zero. And basically next, so we've, made our changes here to the transform so we can uh, visually see all events within this graph window. You can click apply and what that'll do will change the scaling for whatever parameters you've had selected for this workspace. Um, but I often recommend just clicking the save button and what that will do actually save these settings here into a preferences file in Flojo. This could be a huge time saver because 
what it does the next time you load in data from the same cytometer and it has these same parameter and stain names, as long as that's matching, then it's going to apply the same transformation to your data. So you don't have to go back and um, reset all your transformation and scaling again. And here's just some examples of different transformations, right? So maybe you load in some data and we might see that a lot of vents are smashed on the axes or even cut off from view. Or in the center here, we can see things are now really compressed around zero, right? It's hard to kind of get a good idea, like where, where do I want to draw my gate right here? And on this one, am I including all my events down here? I can't really see them all. And so um, when we're able to visually see all of our events, it um, makes it easy to draw our gates, right? We're not changing the raw data at all. We're just changing how it's visually shown to us in a graph window so we can draw our gates. And so here below our first sample, we've gone through and created our gating hierarchy, right? And next, um, what we wanna do is, instead of going to the next sample and continue to draw gates over and over, we can select all those gates, drag and drop, and apply them to the group. And what that'll do, we'll distribute that whole gating hierarchy across the rest of the samples in the group. Um, and what you'll notice is, like the this group here called master gates is the text is red. And when you group apply gates to a group, they'll take on that same coloring text wise here in, below your samples as well. Um, and so that's a quick visual just to see that these are all group applied um, and that they're all the same uh, identical gates applied across all your samples. If you were to come down now to like any of these gates below an individual sample and make an edit, maybe like reposition the gate, you would see this color would change from red and would go back to the default non-bold and just black text, indicating that it's been changed or modified from what was originally a group applied gate. Um, in some cases, though, you know, maybe you don't want to um, adjust one sample, one sample's gate that's been group applied and um, have to repeat that for other samples. So um, you could double click on this group here and get back to this modify group pane. And what you can do is turn on synchronized gates. And what that will do. Um, is now if I were to make a change to one of the gates below one of my samples, it would distribute that change across all the samples in that group. So now they're all synchronized. And if I move one, it's going to move for all my other samples. Um, sometimes though, you also maybe you'd want to delete um, any gates or you no longer want them group applied. Um, and so you can do that from going up to the group pane. Now you can't do it from the sample. You have to go up to the group, select that gate, and you can press the delete key. And then you'll get presented with some options here. Like you can um, allocate that gate just to the first sample and delete it from the rest, or you can delete it entirely, or you can delete it from the groups, so it's no longer a group owned, but it's still allocated and present below all your samples. So you have some options here before um, just totally deleting everything. Oh, uh, let's see, it looks like I have one question here. Let me check this. Um, Christian asked, does um, transformation need to be done before or after compensation? Yeah, good question. Um, so yeah, you'll typically you'll do compensation first, right? And then what we're looking at, um, let me go back 
to this transformation window. And here, so we've already done compensation and we can tell that because the name of our parameters begin with comp dash. So all these parameter names, comp dash, these are all compensated values already. And then that's what we're gonna be transforming and making um, changes visually in the graph window. And similar thing, we're gonna be drawing all of our gates on compensated values. The uncompensated data is still there um, in the workspace. Um, just there's some default settings there that hide that initially from view in a graph window, but you can always um, choose to display compensated as well as uncompensated values in the graph window. Um, okay, let's, um, so with that, let's look a little bit at some live demo. So here's my um, folder and within it, I have like some other folder structures where I've kind of sorted some of my files. And so what I can do is, you know, you can drag and drop and load in files this way. Um, but if kind of like what I have here, you already have things organized in different folders, you can just drag this entire folder of data. And what it does is it kept those folders I had created and just automatically made groups for me in the workspace. So that's super handy, right? I didn't have to go through and generate, click create groups and add groups and then load samples into the group. It'll just retain whatever structure you already have. Um, so notice here the default all samples group contains all my data. So there's 34 samples in it. I don't have any comp controls in this data set, so there's nothing in here, but this is another default group that's just always gonna exist in your workspace. Then there's the data, and then this has 34, so it's like my all samples group. Um, so actually I can, I don't really need this data group because it's essentially the same as my all samples. So here I'm just gonna press delete on my keyboard and it's gonna ask, do I wanna delete that group? I'll say yes. So I didn't lose anything from my workspace. I just removed that group from the workspace. If you wanna remove any samples, you'll have to come to the all samples group and then delete from here. So I still have all my data. And let's see, if we take a look at, I'm gonna double click on this group and it brings up the modify group window. And so from here, um, I can make some changes, right? So here's the name of my group. I'm gonna change this color. Um, later, I'm expecting I'll want to probably create a, a template for my analysis because um, I'm gonna perform similar analyses in the future and with like the same panel, I'm gonna do the same type of analysis workflow again. So instead of having to do all this work over and over, I'm going to utilize my template um, that's gonna retain all my gating and I'm just gonna load in the new data into my template. And so with that, I'd want Flojo to group my data files automatically for me into these different groups I've created. So I'm gonna have more FMO files and the way I'm naming those is it says FMO in the, in the file name. And so what I can do is look for my keyword. I'll just search here, dollar sign FIL for file name. It's a default keyword in FCS files. So if that file name contains the string FMO, I want those as a live group to be automatically added to that group for me. So I'll choose live group, include this criteria and just say apply changes. And similar thing, I'll come to my samples group, change that color. 
Um, here, I'm gonna also use that file name keyword. This time, if it contains LD for lab donor, I want those to get added to this group called samples. Apply changes and close. Okay, so <clears throat> next here I can double click to remove this control bar for zoom. Okay, so here's our graph window. And so by default, it's just showing us forward by side scatter. There's some, we can expand these options here. We can take a look at different um, plot types. So here's like contour plot. And right now there's no outliers shown. If I turn this on, we'll see those dots reappear. Um, we can look at density plots, zebra plots, um, here's a, a dot plot. So with dot plots, you can change like how many dots are, are drawn here in the graph window. So by default, there's a, a value of 8,000 dots to draw for a dot plot. Um, and we can change that. And so the way this works is, so values one, through 100 are interpreted as a percentage. So if I put in one here, it's gonna display 1% of dots. If I say 50, it's gonna be 50%. If I say 100, 100%, it's gonna draw all 250,000 dots. Anything over 100 up to the total number here is interpreted as a the actual integer or number of dots to draw. So 101 dots right here, 200 dots. Okay, so if I come to say like 500, go back to uh, contour, and you can see it's showing very few now outlier events. If I wanna show all of my outlier events, I can come back to a dot plot. I can say, draw 100% my dots, back to contour, and then I can see all my outliers, it's much denser. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to pseudo color here. Um, okay, so drawing some gates here, I'm gonna grab like this pencil tool, for example, and with this, I can just click and drag, when I let go, it's gonna close that gate for me and want me to give it a name. And based on what's um, shown here displayed, by default, Flojo is going to suggest some, some standard names. So if I select this gate, down here in this active gate, I can use this plus button to resize my gate real quickly, shrink it back down, or if I wanna grab a specific verti vertice and like reposition that, it's really easy to do just right there from selecting that gate. Okay, um, and now double click will go into that gate. And so now I'm just viewing the vents within that gated population. So here I'll switch to forward scatter height. Um, draw polygon gate here. And here I'm gonna draw it pretty tight along the edge there. And with this, I can double click to close the gate. This is single cells or singlets. So what I'm doing here is removing debris or doublets. Okay, again, double click to get into that gate. And here I have some live dead stain. So gate on that next. Let's look at the auto gate tool. And so with this, it kind of traces along the um, density population here. So I'll just bring it out to the, as far as it'll go and click to draw a gate, call it live. And so here's, as I mentioned, like a list of some default gate names. If you find yourself naming a population 
consistently the same thing, you can um, you can save. You see here, it already have live saved, but if it's a new name, I can click plus to save that as a as a gate. Click OK. Um, Christian's got a question here. It says, is dealing with one cell line, would you include those outliers or make the gate around the main population? Uh, are, you, are you asking about maybe my original lymphocytes gate? Yeah, um, for, yeah, it's totally possible, yeah, that you might draw um, like a really big gate. So like maybe you have um, other cell populations here. So you might want to draw and include something like this. You might have multiple different cell types in here. Okay, so I have, now I'm down to live cells. All right, next I'll look, I'll go CD3 versus HLA-DR. Um, here I'll grab a, a polygon tool. So here I, I click and then it wants me to click again to set another vertice for my gate. And you can see it just kind of go follow my cursor around. But if I hold the shift key, it'll snap to like 45 or 90 degree line. So I can draw a really nice straight gates. I can draw it on a 45 here, come down, and double click to close the gate. If I wanna, again, like reposition that anyway, I can do that or adjust the vertice a little bit. Now let's look at CD4 versus CD8. I can grab a quadrant gate. I'll set that right there. Okay, so that's a good start to a gating hierarchy. Um, so here's a little shortcut. I like to go to file and I can say close all graph windows and just shut all those down. Okay, and so next what I can do is select all these gates. I'm going to drag and drop up to my samples group. And now it's group applied that hierarchy to all of the samples in this group. OK. Back to the slides real quick. Um, all right, so we have uh, some gates. And often what we want to do next is now um, generate some statistics on some of those gated populations. So you can easily do that in Flojo just from the workspace tab, add statistic, and you'll get this window pop up where you can choose your different statistics you want to add. Um, you could like multi-select parameters here and then click add, and then you'll see they'll appear below the gated population that you clicked on. This window will stay open, so you can quickly add um, additional statistics um, and even select other populations and then just keep adding statistics. Uh, just real quick, there's Boolean gates. So um, maybe you want to create um, all possible combinations for particular markers. Uh, we have a tool for that, create combination gates. Um, so here we're selecting three positive populations, creating the combo gates here. And you click OK, you'll get all these combination of those three different gates. So here, um, we'll take a look at the layout editor. So after right, we've done some gating, generated some statistics, um, we can add this information and plots into our layout editor. Um, 
And to get to that, there's a couple buttons here, a layout editor right here in the main Flojo tab or up at the top, it looks like a ruler. And that'll open this layout. And um, like most things in Flojo, you can just drag and drop a population or even a statistic into the layout. There's also a shortcut, control L for layout on Windows or command L on Mac. If you have a graph window open and hit that, it'll directly add that plot to the layout for you real quickly. So like the Flojo workspace, up at the top of our, our layout editor, um, things are organized in a similar fashion, right? We have these different tabs that group together um, the different ribbons, bands within the layout editor. There's a set of tools up at the top here uh, to draw text, different shapes. Um, you can create tables. Um, there's undo and redo buttons as well. And then similar thing, you can get to the preferences up here or even customize what kind of ribbons and bands actions we have here for our different tabs. Okay, if you've added plots into your layout, um, there's a lot of these tools like um, in the arranged tab, for example, to organize and format your, your graphs. You can add statistics, keywords, draw different shapes, like I mentioned with these tools. And when you right click on any kind of plot you've added, you'll get this, this menu where you can get to the properties window and change your formatting. You can open the original graph right from here as well. Or there's some options right here where you um, turn things on or off if you want to show annotations or ancestry plots, for example. Or, or um, you can get to some multigraph overlays where you can overlay like multiple um, markers in different um, formats, like histogram, for example. If we've added a plot to the layout and we want to change the formatting with that, again, right click, choose um, properties, and you'll get this graph definition window. And there's different tabs across the top. So here we're just in the specify tab. If you wanted to change different parameters to display something else, you could do that right here. Again, changing plot types, um, <clears throat> and depending on what kind of plot you have. Um, some of these options, right, might be turned on or, or off like this. Y-axis scaling would be something more for like a histogram. If you want to change how that those counts are are displayed, what kind of scale it's on. Um, <clears throat> click apply, to apply any changes you made, and then OK will close that graph definition window. So let's say we've made um, an image and we like the way it's formatted. And we've done that just for like one of the samples in our group. And now we want to um, <clears throat> generate that for the rest of the samples in our group. Well, you we can quickly do that in Flojo by using the, the batch features here. So um, you just from the top here, this iteration band, we need to tell the layout like which group are we looking at? And then how do we want to iterate by when we're creating the rest of these images? And here we're going to iterate by sample. So meaning we're going to take the same image, the same gate, and create that for the rest of the samples in this all stain group. And then over to the right, there's batch settings. Like where do you want this to go, right? There's different areas where you can batch to different formattings like rows, columns, um, if you want things on separate pages. Once we've made all those settings, we click Create Batch Report. And then we'll get here a, a batched layout. That same plot across all those samples. Right? And then from here, if we wanted to, we could export an image 
um, that shows all that. And there's different formats, right? PNG, JPEGs, PDF, and SVG is going to get you those the highest resolution formatting. So if you're trying to generate something for a publication, you'd often use a PDF or an SVG. SVG, you can take it into other applications because they're vector graphics and you can modify it real easily. So if we are in a, a batching setup here, you can preview those plots before you actually click that create batch report button. So here we're iterating by sample and I can use these scroll arrows to go up or down the samples in the group and get a preview of the plots right here. So these will update real time and kind of show us how those all look. So before I create a batch report, I can go through and inspect before I generate that final image. Some extra detail here, um, again, like selecting our group, how we want to iterate by, All right? We've been talking about iterate by sample, but there's other ways, like if you wanted to um, iterate by a, a panel um, or even by different keywords, there's some options to do that. Um, there's different format or report types, um, web pages, um, PowerPoints, right? You can obviously select where do you want that export to go. Um, I often go um, directly to like a PDF and export high resolution graphics right to a PDF file. Okay, so before we get into the table editor, let's go back um, <clears throat> to our workspace and Let's see, I had actually, so here's this quadrant one or CDA positive events. And here I can click this green up arrow to display the, the parent population or parent gates that I drew. So I'm in quad one right here. Um, <clears throat> and I have um, extra gates I wanted to draw here first. So I'm looking for some positive signal here. Um, and then a couple other at perforin. I'm gonna draw a gate here on these positive events. And then finally interfering gamma. Okay, so I have those. And so here, I just drew those gates below my first sample. And so I could select all these and like drag and drop up to the group, but there's a, a shortcut. And this is a big time saver. I can just select all these gates um, and I can right click and say, copy analysis to group. And then it's now group applied them to all the other samples without me having to drag it up and find that same gate in the group. Okay, so let's see, if I open up my layout, what we can do is, and I'm gonna drag and drop this population. And what it's gonna load in is, Whatever I was last viewing in my graph window, it's going to load that into my layout editor. So um, again, if I come back here to my graph window, I can now just kind of switch back to my different gates. And here with this graph window open, I can just use the shortcut command L and it's going to add it to my layout. I have one more perforin command L again to add it to my layout. Um, here I'm going to use some tools to kind of organize my graphs here. So I click and drag to multi select or go to the arrange. 
I'm going to align all these across the top and then use this spacing to space them out evenly. Um, if I double click, it'll get to that graph definition window. So if I wanted to make any changes, change a plot type or anything, I can do that here. These dotted lines are page breaks. So I can come here to where these intersect and click and drag and resize my different pages. So I'm try to get all these plots on there. I'm gonna, let's see here. I wanna move these down a little bit. What I'm gonna enter up, up, up above is um, a text box. So I'll select the text tool, click and drag. And what I can do is I can right click right in here and say, insert keyword, select my file. And I can add, for example, like my file name keyword right here in my layout. And in addition to that, I'd like to use this tool. I wanna to create a statistics table and I'd like to kind of present some of that information as well. So when I use that tool, it wants me to add um, some populations to display statistics for, and then as well as additional statistics, right? There's some default ones like sample name, the subset, and count. So what I'm going to do is select these gated pops over here in my workspace, drag them, and then um, what I can add statistics from here and go median and then choose my parameters. And then when I click OK, I'll get this new table right there in the layout. All right, so if I'm happy with this type of image, what I can do next is um, use the batching option and generate this type of output for the rest of the samples in this particular group. So right now I'm in my samples group and iterate by is turned off. So I'll choose iterate by sample. And then when I go to batch by four um, of these repeated images across four columns, because I know my samples repeat. I have four different conditions for each lab donor. So I'd like each row to essentially be from one donor. And I'm just gonna send this to a new layout. So I'll click create batch report. And then we'll see Flojo will generate all those images for all my different samples. Okay, so that's batching by um, sample. So I wanted to show also a quick way to add statistics just directly in the workspace. So if I select my gated pop, I can go add statistic, or there's some quick options here. If I choose like median, I wanna choose multiple parameters. I can just select here what I'd like to add. Multi-select, right-click and say copy analysis to group, and I have group applied that statistic for all of the samples in the group. Um, <clears throat> and with that, um, we could make a table of statistics. So for example, I could select this parent population, the statistics and the three sub gates that I drew and just add all that directly into <clears throat> my um, statistics table here. 
there's some features here at the top of the table editor. If I go to visualize, I can actually heat map these different um, parameters here. And so once I go to create my table, we'll see that it generates the statistics table and it's heat mapped all those um, values for my NFI across the different samplers. Once you've created a, a table in this way to display, you, you do have some different options like how maybe you'd want to export that. Um, so you could export it in different ways here, CSV, Excel, text file. If you want to retain the formatting to where how it's colored and heat mapped, there's only a couple options that would do that. So like HTML would retain this color formatting or um, the other one is, I believe, XML. Um, or if we went directly to the layout, if we added this, you could batch this to your layout and it would retain the coloring. If you go to something like Excel, you could use um, options in there to kind of heat map and those different cells of your table. Wanted to show one other type of overlay um, or image with batching. So what if I now make an overlay of the same gated population, but across four different of these samples? Okay, and instead of um, a dot plot, let's look at a histogram. Um, so I can right click, get to this menu and I come down, get to some different options. So if I wanted to change like line styles or weights, we have those options here. I can change how they're displayed. Um, and notice like when we make an overlay, Flojo's, um, added a legend and then colored those different populations that we've overlaid. If you wanna modify any of that and come directly into this legend, uh, for example, click on this color swatch and choose a different color if you'd like. Um, and so here I've overlaid four different files from my group. And if I wanted to now generate this type of image um, by overlaying four samples at a time. I can do that using um, iteration, but instead of iterating by sample, I'm gonna iterate by a panel. And what I wanna set this to is a panel of four because I've overlaid four separate populations or samples. Um, <clears throat> and so here, Let's see, I'm just gonna, I want these just to go kind of straight down and in my new layout that I'm gonna create. So I'll just uh, create batch report and you'll see it's overlaid those four samples. I got all my lab donor 14s, 12, two and ones. All right, let's go back to the slides. Okay, looking at the table editor, we took a look at this, right, where we're um, selecting populations and like lots of things in Flojo, we're just drag and drop to add that information to the table editor. Um, <clears throat> again, with the table editor, like we saw in the, in the layout or the workspace, Things are grouped by tabs in these different bands. We took a look at um, some of these tools to heat map some of these um, statistics we've added. There's additional ones like standard deviation or expected ranges that you can set in preferences in Flojo. 
So to turn those on, we just go to the Visualize tab, select those rows in the table, and then toggle on that option. And like we saw, we, we generated this table just to display right there on the screen with those um, columns now heat mapped. Um, okay, so now let's say we've performed this analysis and we'd like to um, save some of this as a template so that we can repeat that type of analysis with future data that we'll generate. Well, to do that, you just come down File, Save As, and you choose Export as Template. And what that's gonna do, it will retain all this information um, that we saved up above in our groups. So it's gonna retain all this group owned gating hierarchy that we created. Um, if we've made some layouts, um, it's gonna retain some of that information. Um, the key there is to not perform any batching operations. You just want to set up your layout or even your tables before batching and then save that as a template. And then when you load in the, the data to your template, you'll go back to your layouts and then click the batch button to generate those batch reports. Um, once you get familiar with using Flojo and use it for a little while, maybe you wanna customize it a little bit. Um, there's some settings and, and preferences where you can do that. So going to the heart icon will open up this preferences window where you can change things um, like fonts, default gates, graph types to show maybe how you, some default settings you want for tables or layouts. So there's lots of things to explore. I just recommend um, going through and taking a closer look at some of those settings once you're familiar with Flojo. And you might notice in there too, there's um, diagnostics. So if you're gonna get into using any plugins in the future, you'll wanna come to the diagnostics section and you'll have to set some things like R path or where you've installed R because some of these plugins utilize R. Um, some of them are written in Java and, and others are in Python, but the ones that utilize R, um, you have to tell Flojo where it can find that, that application. Um, a lot of the plugins are just downloaded from the Flojo exchange. Um, and with those downloaded plugins, you'll get how-to PDFs that will go over kind of the general usage of the plugin. And if there's any dependencies to install in R, perhaps it'll have some of those commands that you can enter into R. However, um, a lot of the plugins are just configured now when you run them the first time. In R, it will just go ahead and try to automatically install whatever um, dependencies might be missing. So this is the group, um, Flojo. So we definitely you know, wanna hear from you guys if you have any questions um, or need help along the way, don't hesitate to reach out. We have some good resources for you. We have online documentation for Flojo as well as SeaKeek. Um, it's searchable documentation. There's also some shorter videos here at Flojo University. We'll go over some basic um, workflows, quick tips, things like that. So that's a good resource as well. And of course, if you have any questions, you can reach out to our technical support team, flojo at bd.com. There's um, not many of us there, so you'll probably um, hear it from me if you reach out to Flojo at BD. And as well, um, here's my personal if you want to send me an email directly. There's my contact email right there. So um, with that, I know we're a little bit over time, but not, not by much. So if anyone has any questions um, or want to go over anything else, I'm happy to answer that now in the chat or um, show you any other slides or anything you'd like to see.